Hi guys, welcome back to Nick's Reads. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe if you love watching bookish content. I am back home and I'm very excited to sit down and talk to you about what I read in June and July. While I didn't read a big amount of books, I have three five-star books that I want to chat with you about. I read three books in June and all of them are 4.5 stars and up. So it was a very good reading month, except for one book that I had DNF'd, which I'm going to start with. I DNF'd, which stands for Did Not Finish, Eight Strings by Marjorie de Russia. This takes place in 19th century Venice. It is a YA novel about Franco who lives and works at a marionette theater. And there's also some trans rep in this book. In the beginning of the book, Franco escapes a very bad situation and then delves into this world of marionette theater, but also what happens behind the scenes in the Venice underground. And what drew me to this book from the description is that Franco reconnects with somebody from his past, a friend, and a spark. The sparks fly between them. And that to me with the Venice setting just sounded so, so good. But I didn't get very far in the book unfortunately because first of all I didn't exactly know that it is a YA novel so the way that this book was written was not what I expected. It, it read a bit too young for me. All the chapters were ending with these cliffhangers that I think didn't quite suit the tone of the book because it is a historical fiction novel. I think I made it a third of the way into the book but I just wasn't growing attached to the characters. I already suspected how the book is going to end so that made it quite uninteresting for me to keep going. I actually haven't thought about this book until I sat down and reviewed what books I read for this month so I clearly didn't lose out on anything and I'm happy that I got the time back to read something else instead. But if you are looking specifically for a YA novel with a historical fiction spin then you might want to check this out. Then I read The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. I gave this a 4.5 I loved my experience with this book and I'm so excited to pick up further books from this author. It's been a while since I read something from a new author that I'm like, okay, wow, I hope that this author's other books kind of match this vibe because I, I just really, really enjoyed this book so much. So this is a suspense novel that ended up being way more campy than I thought it would be because I thought for some reason that Simone St. James is uh, serious thriller writer but as I read this book I noticed that okay it's a bit more playful than I thought it would be I don't want to give too much away but in the best in the very best possible way it just reads so well I loved our two female main characters so you get a book that is split into two POVs and you know that a book is good when you're excited about about both POVs. The Sundown Motel is located in upstate New York and the story is told within two timelines. In our current timeline we have Carly who investigates um, missing persons case that happened back in the 80s and our second timeline is in the 80s when the other person Viv actually disappeared. The mix between finding new information in the present day and retracing Viv's footsteps back in the 80s makes for such a good blend. The main characters were so well written I was very concerned for both of these women at all times and I'm personally not a true crime watcher I, I really cannot stomach that but this book deals with the topic of women obsessing over true crime and what it why is it that um, this is such a fascinating topic for many women. Is it the aspect of this could have been me. Another huge plus point for this book is that like in a more classic murder mystery, I was able to put together the clues as I kept reading the book. So when I got to the end, uh, I technically had already figured it out, but it felt very satisfying because I was able to put together the clues and it didn't feel like the ending or the solution come out of left field. So this book was a huge win for me. I Quite frankly, cannot remember why I didn't give it exactly five stars. I guess it didn't felt right in the moment, so I'll leave it at 4.5, but I cannot wait to pick up another book by Simone St. James. Next, with technically 4.8 stars, I read Agatha Christie's The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I'm a big Agatha Christie fan, and I've heard that this book is a very important one in her Elke series, and now I know why. 
So I'm not going to give anything away because I want you to experience this book for yourself, but I will say that it is different from her other Poivre novels. One of my projects for this year was to create some kind of grading scale for all the Christie novels, especially Poirot novels that I read. So at some point in a few years from now, I will be able to rank all of them. My first critique point will always be, is the POV interesting? The POV in this is by Dr. James Shepard and he has a sister who is a major town gossip so he has this interesting acquaintance in his life and i thought that made for a very um, enjoyable read then i want to rate the book by suspense and in this case we know who dies it's roger Ackroyd, as the title suggests there's a build-up first which i thought was very interesting so we know who's going to die, but first we're going to learn a bit about the person instead of there's a body and then we retrace the steps. And I really like that. Now, is it extremely suspenseful? Maybe not. So I, instead of giving this a 5 of 5 for suspense, I give it a 4 out of 5. The next criteria is the resolution of the mystery. This was a 5 out of 5 for me, but I will not give you the reason why because I don't want to give anything away. Then I'm also rating how well does Pablo's personality shine through. Because he is the carrying character of this entire series, it is the Pablo series, I thought that this is a point that I do want to look at whenever I read a Pablo book. I do think that his personality shines through because so in, at this point in the series, Pablo retired a year ago and he does not want any public attention but he still has his eccentricities and he still is full of himself which makes it funny to read about him next i'm looking at can you follow the clues that just means to me is it overly complicated to a point where i can't even follow the mystery anymore or is it something that will keep me on my toes and keep me guessing and in this case i would say yes so it's not that i figured out who the murderer is or what happened way before i i'd say i got there just before the reveal and yet i did feel like it did not come out of nowhere and it was based on facts that were presented before i was just maybe not, pay, not paying enough attention and lastly i had added this initially in a parentheses is do you have no unsolved questions and that to me just means do I feel like this is a finished book in itself or am I left confused as it sometimes happens when you read mysteries or thrillers and in this case all my questions were answered so again that point was a 5 out of 5 so my idea was that for each of these points I can give a 1 to 5 rating and then I will average all of that out and in this case I gave everything a 5 star except for the suspense part yeah I will not give anything away because this is a very unique one um, which is crazy to say because all of the Agatha Christie books are pretty unique. They always have something new to bring to the table, to the mystery table. So yeah, definitely read this one if you want to try any of the Poirot novels. My five-star read for June is a nonfiction by an investigative journalist. Her name is Annie Jacobson and she wrote Nuclear War, A Scenario. You've probably seen this book go around. I already mentioned it in one of my previous videos. But this really, really impressed me because it did terrify me a lot. <laughs> As the title suggests, this is about nuclear war. And more specifically, this is an account of what would happen the seconds, the minutes after um, nuclear war begins. It is very scary. And I will say that it was quite the coincidence that I read this while also watching Fallout with my boyfriend. Because if you know the game or the series, you know that that story takes place after nuclear war as well. So this was an interesting mix. I highly recommend. This is a US centric book. So we look at what happens in the seconds and minutes specifically in the US, um, in different cities and different facilities after a missile has been launched or detected. I already feel like I want to reread this because I also learned a lot of facts in this book. And it is crazy what kind of information this journalist got hold of because she also interviewed people who have since then retired and now want to get certain facts off their chest so it was very interesting to read through this it's a very very compelling read it was so fascinating to read what that this is such a highly prepared scenario while at the same time 
there's only really one outcome, which is basically wiping out humanity if this ever happens. Amongst many interesting facts that I learned is how many billions of dollars get spent in these programs that are so incredibly flawed and do not work as perfectly as you'd think or as I thought. What this book does very clearly, and it is also written in that way, so this, the style of the book really reflects that because it is written in a very compelling way and it is very dramatized. It is not a dry, highly obje objective account of what will happen. It is, you, you get the opinion of the writer very clearly through the lines and what the author does very successfully is de-glamorize um, nuclear bombs. She delivers a lot of transparency and just makes clear how absolutely insane this is. For me, the most terrifying aspect really is that we are at all times so close to a humanity wipeout that could happen due to a misunderstanding, um, due to faulty satellite systems or miscommunication and how the start of a nuclear war basically when it comes down to it, depends on the whims and paranoia of some politician. In conclusion, this is a highly dramatized book. Yes, it has a lot of facts and figures, but at the same time, it is not an objective account of the state of things. It is very much heavily underlined with the opinion of the writer, which I think makes a lot of sense. And it just, uh, it was so, so good and absolutely terrifying and I can't wait to read it again. In July, I also read three books and my ratings range from two stars to five stars. So let's start with a two star read. I read The Restless Dead by Simon Beckett. This is number five in the David Hunter series where our main character is a forensic anthropologist, which I think is an incredibly interesting POV for a thriller series. I cannot remember too much about the first installments of the series. What I do know is that the first one, Chemistry of Death, is fantastic. It is a must read for anybody who loves thrillers. Now, the books that come after are, some are worse, some are better. Um, and in this case, number five was unfortunately a two stars. It was, it was honestly boring. It was a book that was over 500 pages long. And for some reason, I was bored most of the time, even though it was a thriller. And honestly, not, not a lot happened in the first 60% of the book. In short, this takes place in the UK where a body gets found in, what do you call it in English, like swamplands in the UK. And David Hunter goes and inspects the body and has to give his opinion on how long he thinks that the body has been dead for already. And he kind of gets involved into, you know, very complicated lo local, not politics, but um, local inter intricacies between the families that are involved in the disappearance and murder. Unfortunately, not a lot to say about this book. I just, I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the plot. I didn't like the suspense factor in this at all. It's just, it was just not a book for me. Next up with three stars, I read Bunny by Mona Awad. Now, this is a book that has been going around the internet for such a long time now, and everybody usually gives you nothing for a good reason, because I do think you should go into this blindly to really be surprised and to enjoy the twists and turns. What I will say is that the main our main character is, main character is Sam, who goes to, uh, I think, New England-y type of university for arts. It has kind of that dark academia vibes where she goes to classes, she has to write a thesis, and then she comes across this group of girls who call each other bunny. And I know, you've heard this description a million times over already probably, and this is as far as I will go. The reviews of this book seem to be all over the place. Some people hate it, some people love it. I am on the side of, I wish it was crazier. If you read this book, do you agree with me? So not to say that the twists and turns are not crazy, they are, but I do think that the book ends with kind of a neat bow on top, which I didn't expect. I thought it's gonna be a bit more of an open ending, I don't know what exactly happened type of book. It is a great book for people who want to know what happens if you let the intrusive thoughts win. What I did like about this is that friendship is 
the main theme of this book and not romance. You're definitely in for a crazy ride. So if you are curious about this book, then you know what, just pick it up. You have nothing to lose. Then I read Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. It's translated by Thomas Christensen. This was part of my project to read around the world and read more translated books. So this was published in Mexico and written in Spanish. I did not expect to like this book so much. I ended up giving it a five stars. I think I just read it at the right place, the right time. This is a book about a main character, Tita. She grows up during the Mexican Revolution and so she grows up on a farm. There's a lot of violence and war around her and most importantly she grows up in a family where she is suppressed by her mother. She's expected to never marry, never fall in love because she, her role is to basically grow old and take care of her mother. This is a romance novel full of magical realism. On many occasions I was reminded of 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez actually. This book made me want to reread that book. What I loved about this book is that this surrealist magic is tied a lot into food. Food is basically like a character. It plays a big role in this story. I absolutely love the aspect of magical realism in this. I loved how it was so weird, so bizarre, and nothing was explained. And the other thing that I really ate up in here is the palpable passion in this book. Oh my goodness, it is so melodramatic. The longing and the sensuality in this book is overly exaggerated. You do have to suspend your disbelief a little though when it comes to the romance because you have to be okay with insta-love. You also have to be okay with the women taking kind of questionable roles sometimes. I mean this was written in the 80s um, which is one of the reasons I was surprised by myself that I liked it because usually it's hard for me to get over these obstacles. I was able to look past that and once I put that aside I was able to just embrace the story and embrace the passion. I really really enjoyed this. I 100% need to watch the movie because there was a movie adapted from this book that was also very successful. To me, this was the perfect summer book because it is a romance, it is lighthearted, but there's so much drama and eccentricity and lust in this book that it makes for a great, I think, beach read without being bored. Because a lot of the times when I try to read like a laid back, um, low stakes romance for summer. I actually get bored but because there's so much drama in this one I was not bored at all and I wanted to keep going and I wanted to know what happened next. That's all the books I read in June and July. Not gonna lie I feel a little rusty talking about books but I, I definitely want to go back into the groove of uploading regularly again so thank you for anybody who is watching this and stuck with me. <sighs> I'm ready for fall. I don't know about you guys but I'm already dreaming of Thanksgiving food and Gilmore Girls and tea and pumpkins. I'm so ready, but first I have to celebrate my birthday. That's the last thing for the summer. <laughs> Please let me know if you have found a new favorite during the summer. And if you just want to let me know that you're still watching, why don't you leave me a cat emoji? Please give this video a thumbs up if you like watching wrap ups and feel free to subscribe if you want to watch more bookish content from me. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.